My name is Eric Coslin, Technical Marketing Engineer at Cisco Systems, and I'm going to talk about the Cisco FirePower Next Generation Firewall, or FTD, and how you can deploy it at Amazon Web Services. Now, a single FTD can handle both the north to south traffic coming from the internet, say going to a public web server, and it can also handle the east to west traffic going, say, between the web server and the database server. So let's try this example where we have a simple web server that makes a query to a database server and see how the traffic is identified by the next generation firewall. So here is our web server. And let's make a simple SQL request through the web server to our database server. And you can see that that request was successful. Here are the connection events. I'm currently logging at the beginning and end of the connection. So there are two entries in this table for each connection. Now let's zoom in on this part over here. So that's the relevant information and it'll be easier to see. We first have some initial TCP connections where we're downloading the web page. That's to be expected. But here's the interesting stuff up here. First, notice that we, at the beginning of the connection, make an HTTP connection to the web server. And in between the beginning and the end of this connection, you see the MySQL connection. This is going from the in zone to the in zone. So this is our east-west traffic as opposed to our north-south traffic. Now that's a very simple deployment, but let's assume that that VPC is just one of many VPCs connected through a transit gateway. Now we could deploy next generation firewalls in each VPC, but that is not a satisfactory scalable solution. Instead, we put our security devices into what's called a service VPC, and we make sure that all of our traffic between our VPCs is directed through that security infrastructure. Now that could be as simple as a next generation firewall standalone, but for this demo, I wanted to do something a bit more challenging. So let's say that in our service VPC, we have two availability zones, and we have a preferred FTD where we would want our traffic to go under normal circumstances. However, if that availability zone or the devices in that fail, we want to shift the inspection to a standby FTD. Now, this is not active standby in the sense of a HA pair. This is going to be done using the Amazon Web Service infrastructure. In order to do that, we're going to use BGP. If we have VPN connections, and that's why we're using them here, we can inject BGP routes into the transit gateway to control traffic. So we have a more preferred route coming from the FTD that's preferred, and a less preferred route coming from the standby FTD. If something happens to that first FTD, the BGP table will be flushed of that route and the transit gateway will start using the route to the standby FTD. So as you can see in this deployment, we're managing three FTDs. One is that north-south east-west traffic that we saw previously in this demonstration. And the other two are the pair. 50 is the preferred, 52 is a standby, FTDs in the uh, service VPC connected to the transit gateway. Now let's actually look at what's happening here with the BGP routes. So if you look at my BGP neighbors, you'll see on the preferred uh, availability zone, you'll see the neighbor, the FTD neighbor, 
And those are the two transit gateway neighbors. AWS always creates two VPN connections whenever you connect via VPN to a transit gateway. And let's take a look at the routes. And you can see the route we learned from the FTD for the more generic route. This is what's used to direct traffic. And those are the routes that we learned from the transit gateway to get to the various VPCs. In the backup availability zone, things are quite the same. You'll see that we're connected to a different FTD where we learned one prefix from. And we learned four prefaces from the AWS Transit Gateway. Let's look at those routes. And you can see the first route is from the FTD and the four routes from the Transit Gateway, from the two VPN connections to the Transit Gateway. Now, if you look carefully at the AS path on these two devices, you'll see why the preferred CSR is preferred. Now, if you look at the uh, routing tables on the transit gateway, you'll see for the spokes that we have this route, and there are two attachments associated with this route. Those are the two VPN connections to the preferred availability zone. And we have two connections to the hub routing table. This is the routing table connected to the service VPC along with the routes to get to the various VPCs. So let's run a SQL command from the remote VPC to the main VPC. Now let me shut down an interface on the router in the preferred availability zone to simulate a failure of the corresponding FTD. If we look at our neighbors, we see now that there's a problem with the FTD. And if we look at our BGP routes on this router that are being shared with the transit gateway, we notice we no longer have the more generic route that we learned from the FTD. We only have the routes we learned from the transit gateway. And if we look carefully, we'll see that the attachments have changed for the routing tables on the spokes and on the hub to the standby availability zone. Now let's run another SQL server, but this should go through a different FTD for inspection. Back in the FMC, we see the logging of two more connections. And uh, let's take a closer look at these. So, so the, if we slide over to the right, you can actually see the device that the connection went through. And sure enough, the first connection went through the preferred FTD, FTD 50. But once that was taken offline, the second SQL connection went through the standby FTD 52. Thank you very much for your time.